Greetings Tankers, my name is Adam Snellgrove and welcome to an explosive episode of Best Replays. The final video we've got for you. So strap yourself in, hit those like and subscribe buttons and let's get straight into it. Blasting their way into third place on our list is Health Related Social Needs to Hell, or in short, HRSN to Hell, in the explosive Caliban here on Lakeville. And reloading that vital second HE shell just in time, hell yeah! Finding that perfect angle to lob HE shells straight into the paper thin side armor. I just love her seeing that. <laughs> All right, I'll stop. But you know who's not stopping? HRSN to hell with yet another HE pen, bringing the damage total to nearly 3k. Oh, now we're gaming. HRS Center Hell takes full control over the 1 2 line, driving straight into the enemy base just three minutes into the game. Boo shakalaka! But crucially, HRS Center Hell is opting not to fire the second shell despite the temptation. As it cuts the reload by a whole 10 seconds, a thing to keep in mind when mingling in a Caliban. This move, however, may be a little bit over-ambitious. On the bright side, both the Borat and the Borsig present ideal targets for these 152mm HE shells. The only problem now is the 55 seconds of reload time. Phew, finally we're able to play the game again. Double kill. And that's all she wrote. Over 7,000 damage dealt in six and a half minutes. GG. A fast-paced and explosive game by HRS Center Hell, not taking camping for an answer and instead bringing the fight straight to the enemy, dealing 7,680 damage, over 5,000 more than the next ally, but also scoring a top gun and 1,985 base experience, a feat which we think deserves 2,000 gold, our best replay style and the third place on our list. Well done! Up next, we've got an explosive duo of Leonardon and Kaula Beer in a pair of Object 268 version 4 tanks. And I can tell this is going to be a chat game by the fact that the met kit has been replaced with a removed speed governor. That's right, it's ride or die in this one. Charging straight into four enemy tanks that can hardly believe their eyes. Just non-stop aggression from the two teammates, that's what I like to see. Not only blasting the enemy tanks with the mighty 152mm gun, but also ramming them to chip away at the precious HP. One would think we're watching a medium or even a light tank, not two turretless TDs in action. Welcome to the 268 V4 Sandwich! Ah, 
Hee-hoo! Finally, a little bit of a pause for me to tell you that Lanodon has already racked up 6,000 damage. I would be more than happy to have that at the end of my games. Ha! But that's clearly not enough for Lanodon, as they recklessly charge at yet another enemy tank. No quarter given. Oh, no way! That Foch 155 will pay for daring to pull the trigger on our platoon mate. Oh, that damaged engine was not a result of an artillery shell, but for running the removed speed governor for too long. Ha, haven't seen that happen in ages. Oh, switching to HE for maximum damage. Spicy. Not the greatest of trades in World of Tanks history, but as they say, damage is damage. And while it seems like that dastardly Fock 155 is already molding in the garage, there are still a pair of tankers eagerly waiting to meet Lanodon. Here we go! Ramming speed! Why are you running? Oh no, you don't! Ah, oh, and it was all going so swimmingly. Oh well, that would be a GG. What an awesome game by Lanadon and Cowlabeer, showcasing how the 268v4 is supposed to be played. Not from the back lines, but up front and personal. Dealing a combined total of 14,000 damage, more than half the enemy HP pool. But incredibly, only scoring five kills between them. Not even enough for a Brothers in Arms medal. However, I'm sure the two platoon mates will care little when we award them with 2,500 gold and a best replay style for each of them. Well done! And for the finale, we've got another explosive challenger! Ah, do I love being able to predict the future! Anyway, we've got Batman's IS-6 in the hands of Adrian 111111111. Have you checked your keyboard by any chance, Adrian? Something tells me one of the keys might be stuck. In any case, we are here on Glacier, fighting it out for the northwestern corner of the map. Against an ever-increasing number of purple tanks and only one M6 as backup. A lover? Hmm, that's a tough opponent to be facing in an IS-6. And a Tiger-1 now? These Germans have no chill! Uh-oh, seems like our M6 buddy has reached their expiration date, as yet another enemy tank joins this assault. Yeah, that's not quite how you angle in a Lerva. Neither is this the best of positions for an IS-6. Without being able to hide the lower plate or angle properly against the Tiger-1, Adrian is going to have a hard time here. Case in point here. Ooh, now that's both tears and triumph at the same time. Ammo racking the SU-152 but taking another damaging shot, meaning Adrian is now dangerously close to being a one-shot. I'll take over now, little buddy. But that's more like it! In one fell swoop, our hero demolishes the entire German brigade. So now with a minimap looking like this, what would be your best play comment section? 
Hmm, I'm not sure this is what I had in mind. Well, if this is the play, then I shall get a cup of tea in the meantime. Editor, roll the elevator music. Finally, some action! And that is also every single friendly tank being destroyed. So, holding position behind this rock possibly was not the optimal play. Huh, better hope that E25 does not have the gun depression to harass our hero from the top of the glacier. Oh, there's no time to hang around. Phew! Even in 2022, the armor still works wonders. That was a tough fight. But wait, where's the E25? Uh oh! Oh, what a mistake from the WZ120TD! Showing its side armor, which allows Adrian to connect a crucial shot to take it out. All that's left now is just that annoying M44 artillery, which conveniently decides to rush our hero on open ground. With a predictable outcome. GG! A great carry by Adrian, 1 times 12 proving us that the venerable IS-6 still packs a punch in the current meta. Dealing 7,332 damage while ending up just shy of Pool's medal with 9 kills and 2,107 base experience. Combine that with a never give up mentality and this one in our minds deserves the title of best replay which also nets our hero 3,000 gold and a best replay style. Congratulations! And with this episode, we shall conclude the 18th season of Best Replays. Whoa, what a number. In these past years, we have featured over 800 players and given away over 2 million gold in exchange for your replays. And we shall continue to do so. The 19th season is well on its way, so keep those replays coming and it might just be you on our show next time. And in the meantime, I'm Andrew Stonegrove and I'll see you in the next season. Cheerio! as it cuts the reload by a whole 10 seconds, a thing to keep in mind when mingling in a...